Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today we are inside because it is cold and blustery out there which is crazy because it was 90 degrees the other day. So I'm going to be starting four new varieties of cut flowers for my cut flower garden. So these new varieties I'm going to be starting from seed. They are all varieties I have grown with the exception of one will be new to me this year. And I am definitely still starting seeds even though my winter should be done in about two and a half weeks. My last expected frost date is the middle of uh, March. And so even though we're getting close to the frost date, I am still starting seeds and I will continue starting seeds most likely until the end of the Mar end of March probably take a little break in there and then I'll start again for summer seed sowing and starting plants for the fall. So when you're reading seed packets, a lot of times on the back, they say start six to eight weeks before your first frost state. That doesn't mean that that's the only time you can start them. So you can start them a little bit later as needed. You really just need to look at the different varieties of flowers, figure out are they a flower that prefers cool weather and do I need to start them way earlier in late winter and early spring so that they can have the cooler weather of the spring to grow or are they a flower that's fine with the heat and I can really start it anywhere during the spring if I wanted to. Now if you're new to my channel I specialize in cut flowers, flowers that I grow outside in my gardens and I cut them for flower arrangements. I do not sell flowers, I grow them for myself, for bringing them into my house, for giving away to friends and family. I grow them completely for the joy and peace of it. I have people ask me all the time, do you, you should sell your flowers? Why don't you sell your flowers? I'm like, cause it makes it like a job, like a big job. And this is something I really, really enjoy. Um, all of the gardening, the YouTube stuff, this stuff, this is my job, right? The gardening is, you know, a hobby, a fun hobby that, you know, works well with my job with the YouTube channel. And, but selling flowers is a whole other ball game. And I do, I love watching um, flower gardeners or cut flower gar farmers um, produce flowers and sell flowers. It's a whole lot of work. Those people work a lot. So I grow on a much smaller scale and I grow just enough for my own needs. So today we're gonna be starting with four new varieties of cut flowers from seed. All four of these re um, varieties require full sun. So I kind of wanted them to do them all together as a group. So the varieties we're going to look at today are Gomfrina, Strawflower, Azuratum, and Bupleurum. So we're going to go through each one, we're going to talk about each variety, and then I'm going to show you how to seed each one. Okay, so the first flower we're going to start with is Gomfrina. I've grown Gomfrina um, for several years. I've grown a wide variety of them. It's also known uh, as Globe Amaranth. You might hear it's um, spoken of as that. It's part of the Amaranth family and Celosia family. Um, it's a really great hardy flower. It does great as a cut flower. It does great dried as well. It does like a full sun, but does prefer a little bit of afternoon shade shade if you're in really hot dry areas like my particular zone. Now direct seeding is not typically um, suggested for gonfrina. however I have found that sometimes my gonfrina uh, reseeds itself in the garden not over the top but just a little bit which you know totally works for me. It is a slow grower from seed so it is going to grow slow in the beginning and then take off once you get it out into the garden but definitely found it's slow going in the beginning so don't don't get um, worried about it. It grows slow naturally. Um, it also has a pretty low germination rate so when I am sowing these seeds I tend to put four to five seeds in each seed cell. Now the variety we're growing this year is called Raspberry Cream Gonfrey and it's from Johnny Selected Seeds and it is about 18 to 28 inches tall. It is 85 to 100 days from um, seed sowing to bloom. Um, like I said, excellent for cut uh, flowers. Its germination rate or germination time is about 5 to 14 days at 70 to 78 degrees. So I am going to be utilizing a heat mat on this. Um, it does not require pinching or support to grow and I find it to be very hardy. It kind of has like wild, wild stems, like it's not just a straight stem, they're kind of branching awkward stems, which can be weird when you are trying to arrange with it, but I still love it. It's still unusual. It's a very unique shape and texture. 
So I'm going to be using my 12 seed Amazon container and I'm starting with my favorite soil mix, which is my burger meat and seven. And I use a dry method when starting my seeds. So I start with a dry soil, which works really well for me. It's not what all the gardeners do, and it might not work well for everybody. I've just been doing it for so long that I know how to kind of feel what's going to work. So I start with a dry medium all the way across in my containers, and then I fill up my water reservoirs about halfway and allow the water to soak up, and that works really, really well for me. So let's go ahead and do that next step. So I'm just going to fill up my red water reservoir about 50% of the way and then I'll just go ahead and put my container in and you can see it suck up the water very quickly. You can actually watch it sink in time. This, this process works really, really great for me. I really enjoy it. It's been nice hearing that so many of y'all are giving it a try as well. Okay, so these um, go on top. They're lightly covered with about eighth of an inch um, in depth. And like I said before, this is has a low germination rate. So we're putting like three or four in each container, in each seed cell. Now, I'm not saying that Johnny's seeds have low germination. I'm saying that this Gonfrina in general, Gonfrina has a low germination. So I'm coming here and I'm pressing down firmly to make sure that these have really great contact with the soil, which is going to be very important. And it says to lightly cover them. So I'm just going to add a little bit of vermiculite across the top. I don't recommend any particular variety of or brand of vermiculite. This one is, is it's called stay green and it works well just for me. And that whole bag will last me almost two years for the amount of seeding that I do. So we just lightly covered them, not much. They do benefit from a little light for germination. All right, and we'll go ahead and label it and we'll put our humidity dome on, making sure that it is closed on top. Once I've finished all of them, I'll get them situated on the heat map so you all can see. Okay, next we're gonna talk about straw flower. Now, typically with straw flower, I grow it as a cool flower, meaning I start it in the fall, I plant it out in late fall, and then I overwinter it. And I did that this year. However, we had a really dramatic freeze, like really, really cold, and it did not survive. Even though I covered it up, it did not survive. So I go, need to go ahead and restart it. I'm disappointed it didn't survive because it was so beautiful. Like the plants were already like 12 inches tall. They were absolutely beautiful. It was looking really good. But we're gonna go ahead and restart it now, even though I would typically start it in the fall. Since that happened, maybe I just need to start it in the spring from now on. I mean, I don't know. It, it is sad when you do all that work and then you lose it in a freeze. It's just no fun. So straw flower is also known as everlasting or a paper flower for its kind of very papery um, texture. It, it doesn't feel like it's a fresh flower. It feels like it's already dried even when it's like brand new. And they can be grown, like I said, as a cool flower. Um, they are long lasting fresh, but then also can be dried and utilized for lots of different like projects and things along those, si th those lines. It does benefit from pinching. So at a, when it's about four to six inches tall, it's good to go ahead and pinch it above, you know, maybe two or three sets of leaves and encourage branching. If you don't do the pinching with the straw flower, it will grow one flower to start off with, and then you can certainly prune it down, and then it will start branching from there. It is cut and come again, so the more you cut on it, the more it is going to produce flowers. It does like full sun, but also does well with a little bit of afternoon shade. I typically plant it in one of my raised beds that has afternoon shade from the weeping willow in the back. So the variety we're going to be growing today is called Swiss Giants Mix Sunflowers, I mean straw flowers, and this is from Swallowtail Garden Seeds. And these are about three to three and a half feet tall, produce loads of vibrant two to three inch papery pom-pom like double flowers in bright shades of bronze, crimson, yellow, rose, and white. Well-branched, heavy blooming plants, 
are both heat and drought tolerant. Butterflies love them. Flowers last indefinitely when dried. And these are surface sew. Yes, surface sew um, because they need light for germination and they need to be at about 70 to 75 degrees for optimal germination in 10 to 20 days, which means I'll probably go ahead and put it on a heat mat as my house is typically kept at about 68 to 70 degrees. So let's go ahead and get those started. I love straw flowers. I feel like they're just such an unusual, unique bloom. Um, and so I really enjoy growing them each year. So I'm just coming across once again with my dry soil. And then I use two fingers to kind of push down the soil. I'm not trying to like, like make it super tight, but you want the soil firm. And then I usually come across with another handful of soil and press that in as well. All right, and then we'll fill our water reservoir about halfway up and set our soil in there. And you, I love watching it sink down. Now, I just want to reiterate that this particular dry method does not work very well with seed starting mix. I am using a potting soil to do that, and this works great with the potting soil. The seed starting mix does not like wick up water the same way that potting soil does. So I did want to make sure that I pointed that out to you all. Now these are surface sew, and this is the first time I'm um, growing the straw flower from Swallowtail Gardens. And I mean, look at all of those seeds. <laughs> Y'all, the price points at Swallowtail Gardens for the amount of seeds you get, awesome. Just awesome. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and sprinkle a few in each cell. I'm not looking to have tons and tons of straw flowers. It's not my absolute favorite to design with, so I don't want it to take up a ton of space in the garden. So we'll just do one set of 12. And I maybe put like four to five in each container. And if the seedlings end up doing really, really well, I can always um, go through and separate the seedlings when I'm potting up. So I've got those in and I'm just gonna come through and I'm gonna just gently press them into the soil. I don't think I'm gonna do vermiculite with this one because these are surface sow and need the light for germination. All right, and then I'm gonna make sure I rub my hands off in case there's any seeds stuck to them. And we'll put our humidity dome on top, making sure that the humidity dome is closed and I'll get this situated on the heat mat at the very end. Okay, next on the list is azuratum. And I have grown azuratum in the past and there's definitely like taller, medium and shorter varieties of azuratum. Some of them self seed, some of them do not. I haven't found mine to overly self seed themselves. Um, they just do a little bit of self seeding, which is nice. In the past when I've grown them, I don't think I've harvested them at an appropriate time. If you harvest them in too hot of a day, they wilt very quickly. So it's better to harvest them right um, first thing in the morning for azuratum. I do love them for their like tiny, beautiful purple flowers. They're also known as floss flower. Um, and they grow also in whites and pinks, lavenders, dark blues, like all of those tones, which is really nice. They're more of like what I would call a filler flower as opposed to like a main player in an arrangement, which I actually love that about it. They bloom midsummer to fall, which is typically a time midsummer where I don't have a lot blooming. So it'd be great to have some of this. They do like like full sun but they like a little bit of afternoon shade so you might see a trend on all of these they all like just a little bit of afternoon shade if need be if you are going to have them in full sun all day even in the afternoon just make sure you have ample water going to them so that they can withstand those hot temps these also make really great um, dried flowers these uh, azuratum also prefer moist soil they are not drought tolerant and they're not going to be want to be in an area where the soil is going to go dry you are definitely going to want to make sure you have a drip system to them or that you're hand watering regularly especially during the hottest times of um, the summer they are part of the same family as zinnias and marigolds and asters which i always find really interesting to see what you know these flowers are related to because i definitely would not have picked zinnias to be related to azuratum i just they're just so different and unique. Now, um, I did talk about reseeding. They can be considered a little bit invasive because of reseeding. I've never found them to be invasive, but that is in zone eight in Texas. So it might be different in other zones. 
Now the variety that I'm growing is Timeless Mix Azuranum and it's from Johnny Selected Seeds. It is about 24 to 30 inches tall and about 80 to 100 days from seed to bloom. Excellent as a cut flower. Um, it does not require pinching or support, which I'm always really excited for anything that does not require any additional support after I plant it, which would be great. Um, it does require light for germination, so it is a um, it is a, a surface sow on those, and then we'll just bottom water from there. But I'm really excited to try. I've tried the timeless mix before. I like the mixes because I like to have some pink and some white and some different colors. I think they look really fun, but these are just a very delicate, beautiful flower. So let's go ahead and get these started. Okay, we're starting again with the dry soil and with my Amazon containers, which I love. If you're interested in the Amazon containers, I have a link in all of my video descriptions to my Amazon storefront where you can find them. Some of y'all said that you like the containers, except you find it hard to get the seedlings out. I highly suggest that your seedlings be moist, like the soil be moist when you're trying to remove them, and that you use them, the little tools, the little scoop tools. Where's my other tool? Here's the other one. Use the little scoop tools. I find the fork is really great when going in to lift it out as opposed to like the little spade shovel because the little spade shovel gets stuck in the hole, drainage hole at the bottom. I did have a subscriber say that she loves these trays, but she went through and added larger holes, about half inch holes onto the bottom, which is like a drill. And she said it's so much easier because her finger now just fits and she can just pop it up genius that is just a genius tip maybe we'll go back and do that at a later point with all of my trays but genius trip a tip for you know getting these inexpensive um seed starting supplies adjusted for her needs i haven't grown azurinum in a couple of years I'm, I'm really excited to get it going um i had it reseed itself and then i started pulling it out yeah, a couple of years ago. I don't know why. I go through, you know, phases with my flowers, you know, things I like, things I don't like. I change my mind. And that's totally okay. So we'll let all the water soak down. And remember that the azuratum is surface sew. So we're just going to sprinkle it across the top. Tiny, tiny seeds. Literally look like specks of dirt. Oh, so tiny. So I'm just going to do a little sprinkle. Still have plenty to do another round if I want. And then I am going to press these down, making sure they have really great contact with the soil. You want your seed to have great contact so that when it does sprout, it can easily put its roots down the correct way. So we're gonna go like that. I'm not gonna put any kind of vermiculite on top of this since it is surface sew and it needs the light. So we'll put our germination um, top on and make sure that the um, uh, opening in the top is closed. Okay, and then the last variety we're gonna be sewing today is new to me this year. It's called Bupleurum, and it's really grown more as like a filler flower for arrangements. It's also known as hare's ear and thorough wax. It's native to um, Europe. It likes full sun. It is not a cut and come again flower. So it grows, you cut it, and that's it. It's not gonna make any additional um, plants or growth on it. So you do wanna make sure that if you're growing Bupleurum and you want it for longer in the season, that you grow it in succession. So you start another round of it about every two to three weeks. I'm not gonna do that because I never remember and this is my first time trying it. So we're just gonna do one round and see how it goes. Now it blooms a summer to fall. It is known for self sowing, but I don't know if that's in my area or not because this is the first time I tried it. If it's self sowed, I would be completely fine with that. That would be absolutely amazing. And it's also known for long lasting flowers that are kind of like an acid green bloom color. It does say that it, you can direct sow just as well, um, but I am gonna go ahead and start indoors instead. And the variety I'm gonna be growing is called Green Gold Bupleurum, and it's from Johnny Selected Seeds. It's about 24 to 36 inches tall, and its seed to bloom date is 80 to 90 days. Um, excellent as a cut or dried flower. It does say direct seed recommended where plants are in bloom in early spring. So as soon as soil can be worked, cover seeds with a fourth of an inch of soil, thin with first, when first tree leaves appear. Germination is about 14 to 21 days at a 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. 
I guess let's go direct sow these outside. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm not going to start them inside. Shocker, y'all. Let's go to direct seed outside. Okay, so I'm outside in the back, and I think what I'm going to do is just start by sowing just a section in this general area over here. Let me pull up this weed. Now, I don't direct sow a lot of stuff because basically I forget um, to come in and water it. That's the biggest issue that I run into as a gardener. But for this, we'll go ahead and give it a try. It does say I am going to need to come out and water it pretty much every day, I believe. So basically, let me get you all a little bit closer. So basically, I'm just going to kind of... Let me get something to rough this up better. All right, I'm gonna come through and just loosen up some of this soil because it feels a little compacted over here. Yeah, it already feels better. Okay, so we're just gonna come across like that. Basically, I'm just going to kind of like make some little troughs and sprinkle the seeds along those areas. Seeds are pretty little. I don't have a lot of luck with direct seeding. What about you all? That's why I, I tend to not do it. And like I said, I don't think it's that, I don't think the seed is the problem. I think I'm the problem that I forget to water them. That's why I've almost all of my garden is set up on drip lines. All right. So we did that. So let's water these in really well. We're just going to do a light watering from above. And I do need to make sure I come out and water this every day. We are expecting rain the next couple of days, so that should be helpful. When you start to get some water pulling up like that, when you're watering brand new seeds, allow that water to go down a little bit before you add more water in that area, just so you're not moving the seeds around too much. All right, there we go. Okay, and it looks like I've got a lot of things on seed mats. So I'm gonna go, I'm on heat mats. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull one more heat mat. I own four heat mats, and that tends to be sufficient for me, especially if I'm starting my seeds in rounds like I've been doing, you know, starting seeds about every four to five days. That helps out quite a bit. Actually, I take that back. I think on this top part, what I'll do is I'll double up on this top part. Yeah, that'll work good. Because I forgot that I'm down one plug because I added the lights underneath this table, which took up my additional plug that I would typically use for, um, that I would typically use for the other heat mat. And then of course it looks like my azuratum I did not label. God, I remembered. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and place these now. I've told y'all before, but I just want to keep reminding y'all that where these seeds are, they're too far away from the light. So once these sprout, I do need to move them up to the light. So I would typically move them onto here, up closer to the light. If I leave them all the way down here, the seedlings are going to get really laggy. Another question that I saw pop up with was they were asking, how come I didn't leave all my seedlings on my heat mat? Once my seeds sprout, I remove them from the heat mat. I don't continue to allow them to be on the heat mat. I want them to go ahead and adjust to the ambient temperature of my house, which is warmer anyway, but I don't want to be heating them up and forcing them to grow very, very quickly, forcing them to dry out faster, those type of things. So I do not leave my seedlings on the heat mats once I've sprouted. So once these sprout, I'll remove them from the heat mat and I'll remove the dome on top. I don't leave the dome on there. 
you want to remove the dome so that it has really great airflow. I typically remove the dome when about 50 to 60 percent of my seeds have sprouted. I remove the dome at that point because I don't want to risk the seedlings that have sprouted trying to wait for that one or two last seed cells to sprout. So that's what I typically do. Once they get um, a little taller, I have a different set of shelves. I have shelves, three different areas of um, seedling lights or grow lights that I'll move them on based on how big the seedlings are. But I did want to make sure I address that with the heating mat since somebody had asked about it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, another seed starting video going through four varieties. Today we started Gomfrina, Strawflower, Azuratum, and Bupleurum. And Bup Bupleurum is the new one for me. All the other ones I've grown before and had really great success. A lot of these flowers um, are more like filler flowers. They are not like the big main players like roses or dahlias or zinnias. They are smaller filler accent flowers that add a lot of texture to your bouquets. So it might be feel like, oh, they're kind of a waste of space and you know, I don't know. They add so much variety to your bouquet. So I really encourage you guys to pick out some filler flowers that you'd like and give them a try from seed so that you can enhance the quality and texture of your floral bouquets. All right, you all, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you guys like and comment, it helps grow the channel. Drop a comment below and let me know if you have grown any of these varieties and if you've had successes or failures or if you have tips for growing them, especially Bupleurum, since that's a new one to me. And make sure you check me out on my social media outlets, including Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.